Hi, I'm Alistair Benn and this is Vision and Light episode number 24. I'm being joined now with my really good friend Thomas Heaton. Uh, we were supposed to be together in Scotland just now shooting, but obviously with the COVID situation, Tom can't travel. Uh, so we decided to catch up on a Zoom call this week. Now we're changing the format of how we're going to deliver the Vision and Light episodes. Uh, they were uh, too long for a single YouTube video. So what we're going to do is we're going to start chopping them up into parts. Now, typically they're going to be a three part, uh, typically, you know, between 15 to 20 minutes per episode because uh, they were normally taking about an hour. Uh, now for this one, I'm going to be delivering these this today, Sunday for part one, Wednesday for part two and next Sunday for part three. And part of the reason for that is that I'm suffering quite badly with an inner ear infection, uh, which is giving me very strong dizzy spells. Uh, I have some medication that is uh, reducing the symptoms, which is a kind of allowing me to do this, but I'm really having to take it easy. And I'm just tending to kind of lie around on the sofa, reading, playing guitar and listening to music. So just for this week, we're gonna put the three parts out in a single week. In future, we'll probably split them over multiple weeks. So yeah, really, I'm just not 100% right now. Uh, it was just not going to be possible for me to get a regular vlog out for today. Uh, so instead, you're going to have the privilege of listening to Tom and myself uh, talking about his photography, life in general, uh, creativity, all kinds of stuff. So we really enjoyed our conversation and I actually spoke to him the day before I got sick. So uh, we were both in really, really good form. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoy the first part of Tom and my conversation for Vision and Light episode number 24.1. Uh, so please enjoy and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. Hi Tom, how you doing man? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. It's only three months since we were jaunting about in Iceland on our own and now you're in a second lockdown. Well, that's quite funny because when we were in Iceland, you said, I believe this is probably going to be our last trip. And I was like, no, everything's opening up. And whilst we were in Iceland, it pretty much started to shut down again. <laughs> and then you said there'd be an autumn lockdown and I was like, no. And well, here we are in autumn on our uh, England anyway, on our second lockdown, international travel ban, you know, no chance. <laughs> are, are you going to finally have to concede that you're going to have to start listening to me now? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's true. It's true. How can I not listen to the man who's lived in every single country in the world for at least one year? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true enough. Um, it's wisdom. It's, it's, it's my older years, you see. It, it comes with the territory. No, uh, you're just pessimistic. I'm an optimist. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, that's an interesting one. because I've never thought of myself as a pessimist. I've always thought of myself as a realist uh, rather than a pessimist. Yeah, probably. No, I am I'm pessimistic as well. Um, <laughs> well anyway. Um. Uh, well, I, I won't get into that's a function of being English, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. I, I, pessimism or just general, be, generally being miserable, but that's me. <laughs> that, that, that is not the Tom I remember from, uh, from Iceland at all. Um, now, it's nice to chat with you again, because obviously the one we did at the end of the Iceland trip, um, in hindsight, I think the three of us were just completely shattered from hardly getting any sleep and being on the road for kind of 10 days and, and mm. shooting lots. So I, I really thought it was a good opportunity to sort of reconnect and, and to, to have a bit more of a one-to-one -one rather than Adam, you know, doing what Adam does all the time. Ramping our style. <laughs> Absolutely. Only joking, Adam. Only joking. <laughs> I'm not joking at all. No. <laughs> um, so one of the things I really noticed, obviously your last couple of videos have very much been about this lockdown. You're going to be shooting really locally. Um, but it's it's ironic, I guess, because I really like your local videos. You know, I, I really like it when you get into your little local woods and and sort of discover things that you didn't know even within you know 10 15 minutes of your house uh, so do you think this is going to have i mean because this is at least a month you're going to have this lockdown in england so do, mm. do you think this local thing is is going to help or hinder the growth of thomas heaton the landscape photographer um i'm not really sure to be honest i mean it's funny um because I, I love traveling i love shooting new places and different places you know different environments there's nothing more exciting 
than just going to somewhere that for me is completely different, like a desert, for example. Mm. Deserts here in, in, well, I don't think we've got many of them in Europe, but certainly not in the UK. Um, but yeah, being forced to shoot locally is great, has its benefits and its rewards. But at the same time, I'm already experiencing fatigue whereby I just feel like every image and every video is the same. Another autumnal tree, another birch tree in a, in a forest, you know, I think, I think in about two weeks time from now, it'll be five or six videos on the bounce that have been yellow birch tree in a forest. <laughs> and as much as I love the images and I love uh, going out and shooting them, the kind of business YouTube side of me is starting to recognize that, okay, these videos are becoming repetitive and I'm worried that people will just start to fall off because it's not just me. Every YouTube photographer in the UK right now is shooting autumn trees and it's right. great. Of course it is. But, um, I, I usually like to put out something different as often as I can. Uh, so I think another challenge is going to have to be shooting locally, but just trying something different, you know? Um, so all in all, I think it's, it's a good thing. Hopefully people don't get bored with the channel. Um, but a way to remedy that is, uh, yeah, I've, shoot, I've started to shoot film, so I'm, I'm just trying to mix it up as much as, as I can. Um, I mean, I, 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 watch your, well. I, I watch your channel. It's one of the few channels that I actually do watch. Um, oh, I, well, the, and the reason being is that you're, I find that you're incredibly relatable. You know, I, th I think your honesty and, and your, your, your ability to say that you're, you're unsure about something and so forth is, is very relatable. You know, I mean, I, I don't know many photographers that feel invincible the whole time and go out and hit, hit the jackpot every time they go out. So I, th I think that authenticity is important. And I think what you're doing is by, by doing this every week, you know, it is what it is to a certain extent. And if, you know, if you're locked down, you're locked down. I mean, it's, it's not like, you know, cause otherwise, like you said, before we started filming, um, if you go jaunting off all around the country, because you can technically, because it's your work and, mm. um, you know, it's that public perception and, and it's a shame that that, that may end up being the deciding factor rather than the legality of what you can do. Yeah. It's a, it's a really tricky one because I'm torn. Uh, honestly, I'm completely torn. Right? Legally, I can go and do anything I want, right? It's work. Um, I can even, if I can find a flight, I can fly somewhere, mm. um, a work trip. Um, morally, personally, I don't have a problem driving to Scotland, you know, going out into the middle of nowhere and taking a picture because I would be in my van. I wouldn't come into contact with anyone or anything. And even, I still think, it's, I still think if you're sensible and take, precautions it's relatively safe and risk-free um so morally I don't, I don't think there's an issue you know i'm, I'm never going to look at a man in a woodland by himself and think oh cool fire. what are you <laughs> doing you know you know it's uh so yeah but then you've, got, you've just got this public perception and i also have a responsibility um because the truth is if if i go out on a one week road trip to scotland um that's essentially encouraging other people to do the same yeah, um, and it's not very good of me to say no, no. This is my job. You all stay at home, but I'm I'm allowed to go. So there's all of these things that I have to take into consideration, and I guess I just do what feels right. And for me, this isn't March. This is not a March lockdown, right? Right. March, you didn't know what it was. You had to be super cautious and sensible. Whereas this lockdown, the government are clearly saying go out, exercise, and you you can go out for recreational purposes, um, so long as it's local. So mm. I take that as be sensible, but yeah, get outside. It's really good for the mental health, for your mental health to be outside. I think it would actually be more irresponsible for me to try and encourage everyone to stay home. I think it's bad. Right, yeah. You know? It's well, the, you know, this This is the, 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 the great point that you've just made, is it's about what's morally sensible and, and right to do. And, and I think, as you say, you know, you're in this position with, with the size of audience that you have that, you know, people people A are going to judge, but secondly are going to be uh, influenced or swayed by the things you're saying and the things you're doing. So I, I, I don't envy you your, <laughs> your, um, that sort of obligation to a certain extent, because I think in terms of your photography as well, do you think there's a parallel there where an awful lot of the time when you're out in the field, 
that you're feeling somehow your 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 creativity is being influenced by your job as opposed to what might intuitively feel like something that you'd like to do is is does this popularity mm. quote marks kind of become a, a a creative factor i mean i i always like to think no and i try and fight it as much as i can i'll give you a great example a really good example so recently i've just been shooting locally um and locally i just mean my region you know 20 minute 25 minute drive whatever um so i've been going out and shooting and i've been shooting like i said before a lot of what i felt to be quite repetitive imagery even though they're all different and they all have their merits and benefits um but i was um I got an email sent to me in error. So it wasn't meant for me, but it came to my inbox. And it basically <laughs> said, if, uh, you know, if, if Tom uploads another video where he shoots film, I'm not going to watch it. I thought, oh God, how can people care? <laughs> how do people care? Whatever, right? So some people, now in my mind, some people are going to be like, well, if this guy shoots film, I'm not going to watch his channel. Uh, so... When you start to see the, those kind of comments, then the natural thing might be to think, okay, well, I'm not gonna shoot film for a while. Um, but you, about three days ago, we've got beautiful fog. We never get fog here, never. And we had two days in a row of fog. And I went out the first day and I shot with my Canon 5D Mark IV and got some really nice images and I was pretty happy. And then it was in the forecast again for the next day. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna go out again. Um, and I really, really wanted to go and shoot it on film. Uh, but I'm seeing all these comments and I've literally just had a thought maybe a few days ago that maybe I'd not shoot film for a while and just you know, upload digital a bit more because maybe people aren't feeling it or whatever. And then I had this sort of moment where I was like, no, I really, really, really want to go and shoot some Portra 400 in this misty woodland. Um, so I did and you know, I shot a video hopefully it's all worked out great and i'm going to upload another film video my video tonight is another film video right um so i very much do what i want to do and hope that people enjoy it because as soon as i start you know shooting stuff that i think other people and it's just a topic that's done to death but yeah if i start to shoot what i think people will like and what's popular then yeah, i just won't enjoy it and i think the authenticity of the channel will just go down. Well, that's right. And that's what I was saying kind of at the start of this is that, you know, it's part of your, your authenticity and your being just a genuine guy and, and very honest and upfront about who you are and what you're doing is probably the most relatable thing about what you do. I mean, it's, you're, you know, having hung out with you in Iceland for, for, those, for those days and whatever, I, I never felt that you were making images for any other reason than you 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 thought they were really really cool things to point your camera at. yeah all right that's it um, <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah i was shooting some uh, some really really um you know questionable oh yeah adam and i were thinking stuff. what's he doing <laughs> yeah, experimenting <laughs> that's what you've got to do right you just got to try different things and push yourself a bit um and, and experiment you can't i can't just go out shooting you know well-known locations and long exposure blazing sunsets all the time um yeah gotta mix it up a bit i've i mean i've i've, I've seen quite a shift in your photography really in in the last mm, at least a year and it, probably a bit longer um and even in your book um that you kindly gave me a copy of um you still owe me for that by the way so. well, that's why i sent you my ebook yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll send you two copies, and that that equates for the price. <laughs> um, yeah, checks in the post. Yeah, <laughs> Check, checks not in the post. Um, you know, there, there was a clear evolution in the book, and I, I think the the order of the images that you put them in there was was a clear kind of journey just to piss Adam off. Yeah. But you know, that 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 difference from from the bigger grander landscape through to intimate scenes and kind of anonymous landscapes. And, and it's, uh, it's kind of curious to, to see how how you're moving in that direction. And how much of that is uh, kind of caused by the way landscape photography is 
so much more popular now and the popular places were getting unbelievably popular mm -hmm. and whether it's just an opportunity to be anonymous and to go into the anonymous places and not be because i mean i guess when you turn up at an iconic location half of the folk know who you are and stuff like that yeah that happens quite a lot um yeah it's it's oh man it's so many factors i mean obviously you've got your kind of um you know, influenced and inspiration. So, uh, you know, if I if I start to follow a photographer and enjoy their work, um, and I start to appreciate it, I mean, a classic example might be Bruce Percy, right? His book mm. just arrived today. Um, oh, has it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, ordered, I, haven't, I haven't got mine yet. No, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had a quick leaf through it. It literally arrived two hours ago. Um, right. So, great example, right? You start to see these abstract images, these min minimalist images. And if you appreciate and really like the work that you're looking at, then it's only natural that you're going to start to uh, see, you know, start to look at the world in that way when you're out and about. So, of course, you've got influence. And I find that the uh, intimate and the anonymous style of photography is way more popular now than it was three or four or five years ago. For sure. And I've always thought this, that if you go to uh, a big, I don't know, the head of a valley and you get your wide lens out, you know, you've maybe got one shot there or two shots. Whereas if you're looking with more of an intimate eye, you know, there are a thousand shots to be had. Totally. And you can create work that's truly different and not just, oh, another shot of tunnel view in Yosemite. Um, and as well as that, what I find is <laughs> like photography is so popular now. And there, there's such an advance in post-processing software and technology and all of that, that no matter how good your shot of the Buckle Etive Moor is, there's always going to be a better one. Always. Yeah. You know, more colour, more snow, more clouds, whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to put your own stamp on things until you start seeing the world in a way that could only possibly be yours. And that's why if you photograph a leaf on the ground, that's your leaf, right? 20 other people would walk past that 100 right. other people would walk past it um, it might not be the best image of a leaf in the world but it's yours and that i think is really special you know uh, yeah very special well i mean you you, you know you're preaching to the converted in oh, terms yeah. of my 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 approach to the whole thing and and i i think this is where the the influence of of people like yourself and and well even myself i guess to a lesser extent and, you know, there's people like T.J. Thorne and Bill Neal and Alex Noriega and Sarah Marino and Jennifer Renwick. I mean, there's, there's a big list, Guy Tal. There's a huge list now of people that are shooting this type of photography and doing it with a really strong sense of conviction and putting forward a really good case for it. And, and um, I love it. I, I really do because I, I'm, I'm writing a new article just now for Luminous Landscape. And one of the things I'm seeing in it is that photography's got to the state now where it's almost impossible to become popular just because you're a good photographer. You know, 15 years ago when I was starting out, it was much easier to kind of make your mark as a landscape photographer quite quickly because there was just less people doing it. Um, whereas now, I mean, there's, there's, like you say, there's photographs of everywhere have been taken under every conditions, plus all the compositing and stuff that goes on to make it look even more ridiculous. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'd like to think we're, we're on the kind of the crest of a wave that's, that's hopefully going to do some good for landscape photography and the environment, which is this consequence, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you know what it's like at the, the waterfalls at Buckle, at even more, it's just it's a swamp. Just a bar. And it's the same everywhere. Um, I photographed a tree in uh, Patagonia and I'm convinced that I was the first person to photograph that tree. I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong. But, uh, <laughs> there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of trees everywhere. These, these uh, scorched trees. And there was yeah. this one that was just perfect, totally anonymous. Well, it wasn't, obviously wasn't that anonymous, but um you know, it could have been any one of the trees. And I went and I photographed it and I got one of my favorite ever images of all time of that tree. And I filmed it like I do a week in and week out. But this was a few years ago when I wasn't really aware of the impact it would have. Um, and it was pretty, if you watch the video, it's fairly obvious where that tree is. I don't show it. I don't give away where I am, but you, you'd spot it from the footpath, right? It's yeah. pretty easy to find. Um, and then I went back a year or two years later and I kid you not, there was a 
footpath up to that tree, like an actual, yeah. you know, just worn away. And I thought, oh my God, have I done this? Yeah. And it wasn't a good feeling. It wasn't, yeah, look at me. Like, no, 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 oh, no. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, what have I done? Um, so I pretty much now I never name locations unless, yeah. unless it, it can handle it. You know, if I'm on the, on the top of Scarfell Pike, you know, I'll say I'm on the top of Scarfell Pike, fine. Right. Not many people are going to take the three hour hike up there to shoot it. And if they do, it's fine. It gets a lot of footfall. But if I'm in a little woodland tucked away at the back of a hill somewhere in Northumberland, I'm not going to say where that is because it yeah. only takes 30 people to come um, and it loses all of its appeal, really. 